Shalom, shalom, you guys. Welcome back to another video. I want to do a follow-up on uh, the last video that I put out on Nibiru before we get back to the calendar. That video um, did, you know, better than what we've been seeing here recently with all of the uh, calendar teachings. Um, but I got a lot of requests on a follow-up on that, especially when I'm, I, you know, was talking about the, the, the cyclical occurrences throughout the Bible that can be easily seen there that must have something to do with something outside of our, you know, uh, our, our world here. This is um, in, in, in the the stars, things that are happening over and over again. Joshua's long day, the you know Hezekiah's sun going back ten degrees, yada yada yada. These kind of things. Uh, if if the theory is true, then what we should see, because you know with the the, the concept of codes, you have the plain text and the encoded text. One will be verifying the other. So if if Wormwood, Planet X, Nibiru has anything to do with the crucifixion, you know, what happened at the crucifixion, what, what happened in Joshua's long day, Hezekiah, got it all the way back, then we should be able to find this these words in the text. And indeed we do. So I was asked about this. And I, I, I said, yeah, yeah, I have codes on that. Um, absolutely. This is why I tell you that these these events are connected to it. I did a presentation with Gil Broussard a couple of years ago where we talked about plasma and, you know, some some events that had happened with uh, Siding Spring, yada, yada, yada. We talked about uh, Wormwood and, you know, the possibility of um, this object and the code that I, I shared that night, I'm going to share again, which happens to be in those texts. So we're going to be looking at a couple of codes. Let me share that with you right now. Hold on just a second. I'm, gonna, I'm working on two computers, you guys, so bear with me. Okay, so now the other one can share. <laughs> two computers all right here we go the very first one is that a relatively small skip it is a skip of 120 there it goes very good <clears throat> yeah very good so it's a skip of 120 this is in the book of Joshua. So we're talking about Joshua's long day. If you don't know the story of Joshua and what, what's taking place here, this is when they've come into Canaan and they're battling um, with um, the tribes there. Matter of fact, I just happened to see the word Melchemach, which is war, war going on, battles going back and forth and there's there's something that actually happens so let's let's take a look at that um here we have vertically in the text and as you can see it's very small skip we're talking about 120 letters from side to side this is a very small cylinder statistically significant as the rabbis would say now look what what we have here nabiru vertical here right next to uh the verses that talks about <laughs> well let's go read it together I, you, most of you can't read hebrew but this is um something the rabbis talk about i showed you in the last video that we did that i did with scott um what i had on nibiru and that the fact that the rabbis are working on the very same codes because of of this prophecy um, and it's not just there. They, they have prophecies in the Talmud where, where rabbis are talk about this star that's going to appear, this thing that's going to happen. There's going to be cataclysms. There's going to be um, 
you know, things with our, our climate, climate change, all this kind of things that they're seeing now. And I can even cite a couple of um, uh, Jewish uh, YouTube channels that are tracking specifically like Nibiru. And of course, for, for the longest time, I was wondering why this was, was appearing in, in text with Wormwood, because the Christians were looking for um, this thing called Wormwood, which from that perspective and where I come from, I could I could reconcile the rest of the, the prophecies from the prophets about this particular event, in, in particular Isaiah 24, okay, for just for a while. We don't have to go into all of them. They seem to be connected. And there is this key word that is there, and it's Nibiru. Now, this wasn't coined by this, the man named Stitcher. This is this is actually in the Ethiopic text, and it deals with the throne room of the Most High. That word Nibiru, okay. But this guy Stitchens wrote this book, and it talks about Anunnaki and yada yada yada. Don't pay no attention to none of that. Because that has nothing to do with the coined phrase, the coined word that Jewish people are going to call this object that appears in the sky. They're going to call it Nibiru, you guys. You mark what I'm saying. It's not the pagan world like I thought it was. It's actually Judah that coins this term. It's in the text. Look at where it is. This is in Joshua's uh, 10th chapter of Joshua. And we're going to start with, uh, let's back up a little bit. Verse 8, and you who have said unto Joshua, fear them not, they're in a battle right now, for I have delivered them into thy hand. There shall not a man of them stand against thee. And Joshua therefore came upon them suddenly. For he went up from Gilgal all the night, and Yahuwah discomforted them before Israel and slew them with a with a great slaughter at Gibeon. And they chased them by the way of the ascent of Beth Heron and smote them to Azekah and unto Makeda. Uh, and it came to pass, as they fled from before Israel, while they were in, at the descent of Beth Haran, that Yahuwah cast down hailstones from heaven upon them unto Azka. Now think about that. Hailstones. What are we talking about with Wormwood? There are going to be stones. Uh, there are going to be things that are impacting the earth and falling on the people but i said this in the last video don't fret things like that because the remnant is the, listen Yahuwah is the master of precision this is for the enemies of the world the enemies of the world are going to be destroyed in this precision guided hailstones <laughs> okay that's what he uses in this interesting that that nabiru appears here now look what happens on this day that they're in a battle, Yahuwah is slaying the enemy with these things that are they're essentially meteorites, you guys. Imagine that. Meteorites coming down on a battlefield that is sprinkled with Israelites and the enemy. And these hailstones kill the enemy. That's what I mean by precision strike. Okay? Let's continue to read. And then spoke Joshua unto Yahuwah in the day when Yahuwah delivered up the Amorites before the children of Israel. He said in the sight of Israel, son, stand thou still upon Gibeon and thou moon in the valley of Arjelon. And the sun stood still and the moon stayed until the nation had avenged themselves of their enemies. Is it not written in the book of Jasher and the sun stayed in the midst of the heaven and has not gone down about a whole day? Now think about that. This is in ancient times. Right after 
Moses. This is after Moses, after the mountain and the mountain experience, getting the law, and they're battling these giants and these these in the land. Uh, you know, um, several battles, um, Jericho being one of them. Okay, so so you who destroys the enemy with hailstones. The sun and the moon stand still. And by the way, that's what's right next to Nibiru. So there's a direct connection. As you can see, the text verifies this. You, there's no there's no accidents. There are no accidents. That's not accidentally there in the text. It is absolutely the same object that happened at the crucifixion. The same object that, that the... The Hebrews recorded in the book of Jasher, it says that the sun stayed in the midst of heaven and hastened not to go down for a whole day. Do you know that all of the calendars of the world at some point, there were 360 days and something happened at some point that changed that to 365 days, 364 days. In the year. So we had days added to the calendar. This is that point right here. So so this is the text. It does have um, the crucifixion. By the way, I, I, I found this here the, today. This word, which is the crucifixion. Just like a banner growing across the top. Because this is the same object. Now, those of you that have the Peshitta and can search the Peshitta, go to the text where the crucifixion is and look for Nibiru and search all three spellings. I guarantee you it's there. This is this is a fact. This is why we can cross-reference it with the crucifixion being here. Very short skip in this text. Okay. Um, Nibiru it's also down here at this angle. So we got it coming together at a, like a 90 degree angle here. In the black and then down in the blue here. And then, uh, you know, we have a, you know, the United States encoded in this text. And you're going to see this because this has a, a great effect on the world. And the United States is going to be in the middle of it um, when this day's views. And... Um, some think it's very, very soon, um, but it, it, the fact is, it is reflected in these codes and is, I believe, synonymous with Wormwood. We can also find the star. You can see uh, the, in the, in the uh, white right above Kakav, which is star, and there's, you know, like, uh, what we, I just saw the word war, Melchem, right there. All right, so now let's look at the other one that I got for you. Let me stop here on this. So let's go to the other text. So let's go look at the text and has uh, talking about Hezekiah <clears throat> when Hezekiah was dying and um, asked you who for a sign. <laughs> and what do we see take place in Isaiah? which is the sun went back 10 degrees. That's what the text says. And this is all in Isaiah um, 38 chapter, chapter 38. Very small strip. It's only a 23. 23 is the uh, the skip on that, as you can see down at the bottom. Hang on just a second, you guys. Oh, here we go. All right, so. Nibiru in Isaiah. So let's go look at the text there. 
Um, and we'll start right here at the top with 37, excuse me, 38, 7. And this shall be a sign unto thee from Yahuwah that Yahuwah will do this thing that he has spoken. Behold, I will bring again the shadow of degrees. All right, so let me just set this up. Hezekiah is dying. And Yahuwah has given him more time on his life. And he kind of doesn't believe that. So he asked for a sign. But not just any sign. Something that's really definitely, most definitely from the Father. So he asked this, this um, difficult thing, right? Man can't tinker with the sun, moon, and stars. But Yahuwah can. Okay, so Hezekiah knows this and knows that if, if this word is true and from Yahuwah, that he can do this thing and prove it. And so he asked this. He says, behold, I will bring again the shadow of degrees, talking about on the, on the dial, on a, on a sundial, which has gone down in the sundial of Ahaz 10 degrees backwards. So the sun returned 10 degrees. So imagine that. Imagine at noontime, the sun uh, directly above head, and instead of continuing its path, it goes back down 10 degrees. What? You think about that. So at noontime, you got high noon, and then suddenly you use half a day, and it goes back in time 10 degrees. We're talking about <laughs> going back to day to, to daybreak right something like that so it would be something that would be only something you who could do what would cause that in the earth you guys because you know, obviously the earth tilted the earth tilted is what happened the sun didn't move it was the earth that moved what caused it it was the perturbation of an of another planet and that would be the bureau it's called perturbation okay so let's look And the writing of Hezekiah, king of Judah, when he had been sick and was recovered from his sickness. I said in the cutting off of my days, I shall go to the gates of the grave. I am deprived of the residue of my years. I said, I shall not see you, even you in the land of the living. I shall behold a man no more in the inhabitants of. Uh, I shall behold man no more with the inhabitants of the world. Mine age is departed and is removed from me as a shepherd's tent. And I have cut off like a weaver my life. And he will cut me off with the pinning sickness from day into night and will thou make an end of me. Right? I will reckon till morning. As a lion, so will he break all my bones from the day even to night without make an end of me. Like a crane or a swallow did I chatter. I did mourn as a dove. Mine eyes failed and looking upward. O oh, Yahuwah, I am oppressed. Undertake for me. What shall I say? Hath he spoken unto me and himself had done it. And I shall go softly. All my years in bitterness of my soul. O Yahuwah, by these things which men live, and all the things that are in my life and in my spirit, so wilt thou recover me and make me to live. Behold, for a peace I had bitterness, but thou hast in love to my soul delivered it from the pit of corruption, for thou hast cast all my sins behind my back, and the grave cannot praise thee, Death cannot celebrate thee, that they that go down in the pit cannot hope for thy truth. The living, the living, he shall praise thee. As I do this day, the father to the children shall make known thy truth. Yahuwah was ready to save me. Therefore will I sing my songs to the stringed instruments all the days of my life. And in the house of Yahuwah. Right. So Hezekiah was. Dying. And you can see here. Where it is in. Um, 
38, 39, excuse me, 38, 9, 10, 11, where the word Nibiru is. Let's go back and see what that is talking about. Starting with eight, you know. So right above that. Right here. Behold. I will bring again, back again, the, the, the shadow of degrees. It's like a banner right over the top of the word Nibiru. See how that's all of, of verse 8 right there. So you have verification from the encoded text to what's on the surface. Holding to the concept that the encoded text and the plain text speak to one another. And what baseline do we have? Well, you know, I can cite Isaiah 53 in all of the Messiah codes where we can see how they relate, how subject matter relates to what's on the surface. The encoded text, it goes together. So, um, that's the other text, Isaiah 38 with Nibiru there, the story of Hezekiah. We do have Wormwood here. And the four letters here is Kachav. And it's not in a straight line because it's actually going around this very small cylinder, which is 23. Kachav is there, but it appears sort of kind of um, in an oblique um, uh, formation there. But it is, in fact, equal letter distance skip of the word star um, that's here. So very narrow strip of uh, prophecy or prophet, Isaiah to be more specific, talking about Nibiru. So you guys, it's very clear to me. Uh, that this is a real thing and there, there's a reason why that word appears in the text so many times um i do have some more codes on i mean loads loads of co codes on the beer or wormwood or the destroyer um here's one i've had Here's one I've had for a few years that I've been working on, looking at. Actually put up for a while, but but it's there. And and we can see there is a connection to war with this. It's called war, the, the uh, Nibiru event. The Nibiru event. Is it showing? There we go. Long letter, long, long access term. You got war right there next to it. Um, wormwood. It's like a banner across the top. You've got the whole days come. Um, and I'm sure loads of other things. Uh, this is technically up in the, uh, in the Torah. So that would be technically a Torah code. So we do have prophets. By the time we get down here, Hene Yamin Bayin, the holy days are coming. Um, and I'm sure loads of information here on, on this very subject. Uh, You can see what we got um, on that subject is several tables on that subject alone. Uh, 
Um, and of course, I'm working on others that I'm going to do for another presentation um, on the calendar. So that'll, that'll be coming up soon. You guys um, had got sidetracked on this <laughs> Nibiru thing. And it all was because Jacob had um, numbers 24 in the, 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 the Parsha the other day. And he asked me if I wanted to share anything. I was like, you know, I got I got a code on, on that. It's actually Balaam who prophesied something on this. So um, that's kind of how that, that got started. We got a few emails here recently. I want to I wanted to mention this before I close this out, uh, asking about the personal uh, codes. I am still committed to that, you guys. <clears throat> I did have to put that down for a while because the complications and things going on in my life. It's no secret. My life had been turned completely upside down and inside out this past year, and uh, it's been it's been pretty tough. I'm 50 years old. I'm having to start over for the second time in my life, you guys, and um, things have been difficult, and I appreciate your patience. I will not let you down. I still got roughly around 40 left to, to go, and I've been through more than 300 at this point, so it was a huge undertaking for one person. I did get Scott to help me on some of them, um, but it was a huge undertaking, and I'm still committed to that, so I saw the email from um, Tawny. I think I saw Sister. I, yours, I thought I've already sent you a, a video. I thought I did your video already. I guess I haven't. I will follow up on that. Um, hang tight. Don't worry about it. It's just been, you guys, <laughs> the things that I've had to endure this year is um, that's remarkable. And I'm here. And so I'm thankful the Father has endured sustain me he's he's put people with me to um be my family be my friend and you know help me and so i'm rebuilding my life right now i'm coming back up with the bees um uh, i've got a bee business that i've started here recently and i'm really really focused on matter of fact i'm a little overextended on that and it's left me um short this month where I can't cover some of my expenses. So I'm actually going to have to ask for some help here very soon. Um, if anybody wants to help me with a donation, um, you guys, I could really, and I don't do this often. So, you know, if I'm asking you, it's, it's pretty serious. I am behind on expenses and I got other expenses to coming up. Um, other than that, doing really good. Um, it's just I've put a lot into starting this business and I left, you know, left myself short for expenses for myself for the month. So if you don't know how to do that, let me show you. If you can go to my YouTube page, because people often ask me how do we do that. If you go to my YouTube page, as you see the homepage here, and to the far right, there's a donate button. That's the best way right there. So if you, if you don't mind, if you don't mind helping me out, if you appreciate this channel, if you love what I've done and uh, have been doing on this channel for years, since 2009, you guys, uh, this is all I've done right here, other than the school. And um, it's all I got. <laughs> it's all I got. Trying to go get a job somewhere and uh, it ain't happening. Um, yeah, especially being out of the workforce this long. So if you can help out, thank you. It would really appreciate. I really appreciate it a lot. Uh, shalom to you. May you will bless you guys and keep you. Uh, we'll see you in the next video. I got uh, an, an, another teaching coming out on Shavuot, which is coming up in uh, less than a week, and we're going to be talking about that in the next video. So shalom to you. May you will bless you. Make His face shine upon you and keep you. We'll see you in the next video.